What's up, everybody? This is Victory with another Princess Connect video. Uh, we just found out right before the weekend that Clan Battle is coming this week on February 10th. I know most of you are probably scrambling to get ready for that. And today I just wanted to go over a few of the one and two star units that are especially useful in clan battle uh, to help you fill out your teams and kind of then go over how they can fit into some different team compositions um, just to kind of help you out and uh, help you get ready and get your best possible score in this first clan battle. Uh, so basic structure of clan battle in case you don't know is that you and your guildmates will be fighting against large bosses and those bosses have large hp pools and significant amounts of defense uh, so what you can expect is kind of longer battles where your goal is just to rack up as much damage as possible in the given time limit this is one of the things that makes clan battle so different from other game modes is that you are really focused on just getting the highest numbers possible on your damage totals. So defense breakers and good DPS units are very important, and you gotta have three teams worth of them, uh, a total of 12 units, and then you can borrow your clanmates' units. Uh, since this guide is gonna be focused on free to play, I'm going to assume that most of us do not have Makoto unless we re-rolled for her, uh, and maybe probably don't have a lot of the other good three-star units as well, but that's okay because as it turns out, there are a large number of one-star and two-star units that are really helpful as damage dealers in clan battle. And we're gonna go over those as well as the Makoto banner, uh, actually Makoto and Maho shared banner, if I'm not mistaken, uh, which will be coming out this week as well, and whether or not you should be pulling for that based on your situation in the game. So let's get right into it. The first and probably most important of these units that we're gonna talk about is Mitsuki. She is a two-star unit. Uh, she has a large defense break that lasts for a long time and is easy to tell when it's on, which is important for some of the partners for Mitsuki uh, because it's just a big red circle in the middle of the ground. Um, there are a lot of units who do their best damage if you time their union breaks with a defense break, and Mitsuki is very easy to do that with um, so that you can be sort of semi-auto in your battle instead of having to go full manual. Um, she is also pretty tanky uh, for an offensive unit. She sits in the middle and she has a lot of durability. You shouldn't really have to worry about her getting um, KO'd in the middle of a clan battle fight. Um, she should be pretty well safe uh, during your battles, which is great because she can keep doing her thing. Uh, and her shards are farmable from the dungeon. Uh, so she's one that's easy to get and to star up since dungeon coins are so easy to get. Next up is Kauri. And as of right now in the global server, Kauri is probably the best damage dealing unit for clan battle by a long shot and there's a few reasons for this uh, one is that the weapons that she equips as a fist user give her a very quick uh, tp gain um, she's going to be, be able to use her union break quite a bit during the fight uh, because she gains tp so quickly thanks to her equipment um, in addition to that, she has a self-attack buff that can stack up to five times. So the longer the fight goes, the more damage she's going to be doing per hit, as well as on her union break, which is a pretty big shot as well. Uh, her shards are farmable from Princess Arena, which uh, is not really something I think most free players are going to be farming yet. But since she is a two-star unit, she's one that you likely have rolled if you've done a few initial rolls, um, like I think most of us have. Uh, so if you have her, absolutely She's one you want to have at her very best going into this first clan battle. Shiori is probably the second best damage dealer for clan battle. And again, it comes down to her stacking self attack buff. Uh, this one, instead of being an ability that she uses, is part of her union breaks effect. So the more she can use her union break, the more she can stack her buff during a fight. Um, for this reason, she's really good with a TP charger such as Saren or uh, even Yukari if you are planning to use Yukari in your guild battles. Uh, but basically, you want Shiori with someone who can charge her TP up so that she can use her Union Burst more often so that she can get bigger damage on her auto attacks. Uh, and she is farmable from hard mode, uh, node 5-3. Um, I personally don't have her. Um, and there are, once you get past Kauri, there are a little bit more competition for damage dealers. Kauri is the best by far, but Shiori is probably the second best. 
Hiyori is another damage dealer, kind of in the same vein as Kaori. Um, her disadvantage under Kaori is that she does not have a stackable self buff, but she still can buff her own attack. Um, like Kaori, she uses the fist type weapons, which means that she's going to be gaining TP very fast, and she has pretty good burst on her union break. Um, her shards are farmable from Battle Arena, so if you have a few of them already, you might be able to get her to two stars by the time Battle Arena comes around. If you're a soft launch player and you already knew about her, you might even have her at three stars, uh, but that will help her damage output immensely if you can get her to two stars. Either way, like I said, uh, her thing is just like Kaori, she's going to be using a lot of union bursts and uh, doing that good burst damage as well as um, just having a good attack buff that allows her to do more sustained damage over the course of the fight. Next on our list is Suzuna. Um, Suzuna, of course, is the one everybody kind of knows as your free-to-play story mode carry because her single target damage is just intense. Uh, she has the self-attack buff. She has guaranteed criticals on one of her attack skills and her union break. Um, she's one of them. I mentioned earlier there are some damage dealers that you really want to time their union break with a defense down. Suzuna is the poster girl for that tactic um, because her guaranteed crit on her union break can just achieve insane levels of damage if you can time it with a good defense break. Um, so because she's a bow user, her attack speed and her TP gains are going to be very slow. Uh, she's another one who would work well with a TP charger, um, but in general, she's just gonna give you big damage uh, thanks to her crits, and it will get a lot bigger if you support her correctly. And her shards are available in Princess Arena, so hopefully you pulled her because again, those are kind of hard to get, but she is a two-star unit, so not too hard to pull. Eriko is our next one. And Eriko deals a lot of damage with her self-attack buff as well as um, her poison effect, which just kind of adds more damage on top of the big damage she's already going to be doing as an axe user. Uh, thanks to the axe weapons she equips, she has a lot of base attack, and so she scales pretty well with attack buffs um, and speed buffs as well. Uh, the one thing about Eriko that is sort of a disadvantage is her squishiness. Uh, she sits in front and is very susceptible to splash damage from the boss, ending her career a little bit early. So she's one who needs a little extra support. You would want either a good tank in front of her or a healer behind her, or maybe even both, uh, but she can put out pretty big numbers if you're able to keep her alive through the fight. And her shards are available in hard mode if you don't have her yet. She's a two star unit. Mimi is the next damage dealer on her on our list here. Uh, she has a small team attack buff that she applies during one of her basic skill uses, and uh, she also has pretty good burst damage on her union break. So she's another one where you would want to have her with a TP charger uh, so that you can use her union break more often and of course also time it with defense breaks. Uh, her shards are available in hard mode. Uh, this is one that I don't have myself, uh, but she would be good. Like if you have a team where you've got your defense break, uh, you've got your damage pretty well set up, um, she can add an attack buff to sort of round out the team. So she sort of plays switch as a damage dealer and a bit of a support role. Up next is Tamaki. And Tamaki is a damage dealer, but she plays sort of a unique role uh, because her shtick is that she can delay the boss's union breaks with her TP steal attack. Um, so she works pretty well as a support for a squishier team where um, you want to remove one of the boss's union breaks from the fight uh, so that, say, your Eriko or whoever it is that is having trouble surviving um, can get through that fight unscathed thanks to the boss not dealing as much damage over the course of the fight. Uh, her shards are available in the battle arena, um, and her damage output is a little bit lower than other damage dealers, uh, so it's, it's more of the utility aspect that you would bring her onto your team for clan battle. And she is a two-star unit as well. All right, last but not least is Kokoro. Uh, so Kokoro is not really a damage dealer. Um, she's kind of the fullest support that we have on this list because her job is to make all the other units on the team do more damage. And she accomplishes that in a couple of ways. Uh, number one is her team speed buff. 
it is a small speed buff, but it can be stacked multiple times throughout the fight. Um, so she is one that is really good if you have some units that do a lot of big damage, um, or if you have units that already have a fairly high rate of attack speed, um, she's just going to make them go in overdrive. Uh, she also has a team attack buff that she brings in and can heal herself. So she's one that you wouldn't need to worry so much about having a healer on your team uh, because she can stay alive through the fight. Uh, so she's one that you really want to pair with a unit where she can maximize their effectiveness. Um, she's pretty good in a variety of physical attacking or even magic attacking teams, although I don't recommend magic attack teams for the first clan battle. Okay, so let's put it all together. Now that we know some of the good units for clan battle, um, we can look at some possible team compositions. And like I said, we're gonna be making teams of four because we want to be borrowing a unit from our clan mates. If you don't have Makoto, that's gonna be Makoto every time. If you do have Makoto, then you can throw her into one of your teams, borrow like a June or a Mitsuki. Uh, and the idea there is you wanna have two defense debuffers in every team if possible. You also want to have at least two damage dealers and then one support or tank. Um, depending on your team composition, you might not need a tank, although as you get further in and the bosses do more damage in clan battle, it's going to be harder and harder to get through without either a tank or a healer. Um, so we'll look at some compositions here. This one, my goal is I want Kaori and Hiori to get their speed buffed by Kokoro. They already gain TP pretty fast and Kokoro's speed and attack buffs will just make them go crazy while Mitsuki will soften the enemy up with her defense break so that they can do a lot of sustained and burst damage uh, through the boss's weakened defense. And again, we'll be throwing Makoto in with them. Um, that would be kind of risky if I don't have a lot of beef on my front line, you know, like if Kaori doesn't have all her gear refined and things, she might have trouble surviving. Um, but if we can get away with it, there's a huge damage output from that team. Uh, the next one here, again, we're going to throw Mitsuki in, uh, but you would want, this would be more of a um, high burst team rather than a sustained damage team. Um, so you'd throw in like Eriko and Suzuna, uh, and then again, you want Mitsuki for the defense break, uh, but because we've got Eriko, we want to have somebody good in front of her, so Miyako can tank attacks really well. Um, if you have June, June would be great for this team as well, although I would say three defense breaks is maybe a little bit much. Two is usually the magic number uh, to get the boss down where more defense break is just sort of overkill. Um, but again, the idea is if you have squishy units, back them up with healers. If you have units that have big burst, back them up with TP chargers or um, somebody who can get their burst in more times per fight, like a speed booster. Uh, you just kind of want to set your units up for success by maximizing what they're good at within the team composition. One thing to note is you cannot use the same of your unit in two different teams. Uh, but if you, let's say you have your own June and then you borrow a June from somebody else, you can use June in two teams that way. Same thing, if three of your guildmates have Makoto as a borrowable unit, you can borrow a different Makoto each fight to have three Makotos. Uh, this is ideal for any of us like me who don't have Makoto. And with that, let's go to the last segment of this video, which is should you pull for Makoto? So here's the thing. We all know Makoto has two defense breaks. She's the best unit for clan battle. She's really great. She's hard to get because her shards are only available in clan battle, etc., etc. However, I am not planning to pull for Makoto. And I, I think unless you have not pulled on any banners, if you're free to play and you don't have Makoto, um, you, this is maybe not the banner that you want to pull for Makoto on. And here's why. Uh, the first thing is that if you are in a clan that has Makoto as a support, you can use her as a support in all three of your battles, assuming at least three of your guildmates have her. The other thing is, this is a shared banner between Makoto and Maho. So yes, Makoto will be a more likely to get, but even though Maho is a great unit, I really don't see her being very useful in clan battle. And so it's almost like you have a rate up, but half of your rate up is a trap. Um, and I think really this banner is a trap. Um, I rolled on the June banner because I really needed a tank. I really needed a defense breaker. And I had about three or four units that were good pulls for me that I didn't have yet. 
um, that were not a three-star unit. Um, so for me, there was a lot of good outs on the June banner. For Makoto, my personal situation is Makoto is about the only good thing I could pull on that banner. Maybe Shiori, um, but I really don't want to count on a half rate up three star and one two star unit out of the whole pool um, to make the banner worthwhile. I don't think that's worthwhile for me. Now, in your situation, like if you're a spending player, if you want Maho for PvP, uh, if you are not uh, flush with one and two star units yet, and like in my last banner, I had a lot of good outs of one and two star units that I wanted to pull in it. If, if you're in that situation still, this might be a better deal for you. For me, I don't see the Makoto banner as valuable uh, because I'm going to be pulling a lot in the future. And I know clan coins are not the most, uh, not the most widely accessible thing. Your clan has to do pretty well in battles to get enough coins to be worth anything. But if nothing else, I plan to get Makoto from coins because I think my clan is going to do quite well in the battles. Um, so for me, this, this banner is kind of a trap. It's not valuable. I had to think about it a long time because it was very tempting. Um, but I don't think it's a valuable banner for me. And I think for a lot of free-to-play players, um, if you're in a guild where you can borrow a Makoto and you're good on your one and two star units, this probably is not a, as valuable a banner for you as uh, you might first think just by seeing Makoto. I think, I think it's kind of a, it's kind of a, a gem trap. Um, you would have to get lucky on it to make it really worth your while. Um, so I would I would caution against it. But again, if you're in the right situation for it, you could get a lot of value from it. I'm not there. And I think a lot of people who have been playing similar to me are going to be in a spot where it's not a good banner for them either. So hopefully that kind of helps you decide. I mean, again, obviously Makoto is a very good unit, but if you didn't re-roll for her, um, then you probably don't want her bad enough to pull on this banner. I guess that's the, the quickest way to say it. If you didn't re-roll for Makoto, you don't want Makoto bad enough to roll on this banner because it's only a half rate up. Um, so hopefully that helps you. And again, I wish you all the best of luck in clan battles. Thank you so much for watching. Please drop it a like and a comment. Love hearing from you guys about what content you want to see, uh, things like that. Uh, so we'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.